last track, and I know that for you guys is, uh, is considered one of the not so fortunate slots you can have in a conference, as it might be like, oh, I have to prepare my slide until the very last minute. Or, um, but uh, just to let you know, from an organizer's perspective, one usually puts some very, very interesting stuff in the last slot so people keep their attention. And look at this, uh, the room is, um, room is full, very happy to have the guys from Proofpoint here um, with some probably very interesting stuff. Uh, thanks for coming. Okay, hey, thank you. Um, hi guys, uh, so thank you for coming to the talk. My name is Wayne Huang. Um, so I was founder and CEO to Armorize Technologies and uh, Proofpoint acquired Armorize in 2013. So I am now a uh, VP of Engineering at Proofpoint. I speak um, often at other conferences, um, RSA, Black Hat, DEF CON. Uh, it's my first time coming here. Very happy about it. So uh, thank you for having us. My colleague, Sun. Hi, everyone. My name is Sun Huang. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm a third researcher at, work at Proofpoint. I'm also a pen tester over 10 years experience. I presented at RSA USA 16 and RSA Asia Pacific 15. Hope you guys enjoy this talk. Okay, thank you, Sun. So, um, Sun and our team back uh, in Taipei. Proofpoint is headquartered in Sunnyvale, but we have about a 70 people team in Taipei. And this is where the research came from. Sun leads that team. Um, I was also involved in this particular research, so I'll, I'll be doing to the talk. I'll be doing the talking. Um, we're going to be talking about an actor called the Norton Go today. Uh, it's they're based in Russia. We're going to be talking about their attack chain, basically five phases. First is how they are able to infect legitimate websites, um, and second is how they're using their TDS to filter out all of these. Um, access by security researchers and also crawlers, bots, and um, uh, scanners by security vendors. And then phase three, when these infected URLs, when these websites are visited by their target victims, how they're able to get into the um, endpoints and infect these endpoints with their malware. Phase four is how they're stealing uh, banking credentials using their malware. And then uh, phase five is how they're leveraging all of the endpoints that they have infected to run quite a, a, um, a large tunneling, paid tunneling service for other actors uh, to leverage. And how these other actors are paying them and using this tunneling service. We're going to be talking about who are the victims that, that they have infected and making a conclusion. Okay, so Norn Goad, it's a Russian-speaking cyber criminal group. We don't know exactly who they are, uh, but we know, we know that they all speak Russian. <laughs> um, and what's unique about this group is they infect websites and um, they inject JavaScript into these websites that point eventually to um, EKs, exploit kits, but they do not do any um, website hacking themselves. They don't know how to do SQL injection. Um, they don't use server exploits to get into these websites. What they do is they purchase large amounts of shared hosting username and passwords. They purchase these uh, really big text files from the underground market. Um, and these text files contain usernames and passwords to shared hosting. And they have a way, as we will show uh, you their actual programs, they have these tools that they develop themselves to validate which entries in these uh, text files are working. Okay, so they will automatically log in, try to log in, and see which ones are the working um, uh, admin user account passwords. And, um, and then finally, they would, uh, they would inject into these legitimate websites through, through cPanel backdoors, and they have programs to talk to these backdoors and inject malicious script. Um, when the, the visitors 
go onto these websites, they will be infected with their malware. Uh, and, and they use Qbot a lot. So they've managed over time to build a botnet of um, over 500,000 uh, bots. And we have been tracking them for about 18 months. One of their variation of Qbot sniffs banking traffic, mostly from US banks. So they hook into the browser, um, they do man in the middle, uh, and they recognize all of these um, HTTPS formats for a large number of US online banks. Okay, so when they see that it's an e-banking, online banking session, they will recognize which fields are important and they will sniff out these fields, send it back to their command and control. And finally, with their endpoints, um, sniff and get banking credentials at the same time, also offering a tunneling service for other criminal actors. So this is the uh, attack chain. Uh, very simply, they, they have these compromised websites that uh, they inject malicious JavaScript into that will redirect to their TDS. Um, and then they send out links to these legitimate but compromised websites through email. Their TDSs will filter out which are the victims that they want to infect. Um, for example, the referrer has to be right. If you're, com if you're coming, um, if this HTTP, uh, HTTP request does not have a referrer, if the referrer is blank, or if the referrer is not coming from one of their infected websites, the TDS will not serve out anything. It will not serve out redirection traffic. Um, only when it's, it's one of their less than 300 websites would the TDS actually then try to dis determine uh, whether this victim is infectable or not. Um, so they do not, although they have a huge number of cPanel admins and passwords, they do not infect these websites at scale at all. We have never seen them infect more than 300 websites at the same time. Um, and so they're very strict about their TDS settings. If, you're not, if your referrer is not coming from one of their infected websites, you'll not get served um, their malicious script. Uh, and as we will show you their tool, they, have, they wrote this other tool um, to check whether one of their less than 300 infected websites is on any of the security vendors blacklist. If any of their websites makes it to any one of the 20 some security vendor blacklists, they would get alerted automatically by ICQ. Their script would alert them through, through their ICQ account. And they would, they would then go pull down that website and add an, and infect another one. So they keep that number pretty much um, between 100 to 300 constantly, but they do not uh, mass infect. Um, and, uh, and then when the TDS is happy about uh, the, the, the visitor and, and believes that this visitor is a in fact, a victim. Um, it will check whether it has the ability, this actor has the ability to infect that visitor. If you're on a Mac, they will not redirect you. Um, they only spread Windows malware, and they're very strict about that. So right now, from the past 18 months, we have uh, their TDS rules. Uh, from their TDS rules, we can see that they target Firefox, Chrome, and Internet Explorer only. And finally, um, these exploit kits, uh, will serve out exploits. They do not, they, uh, uh, everything on this, they run by themselves except the EK part. These exploit kits, they rent as a service from other uh, criminal actors. They don't, they don't run the EKs themselves. They provide the malware themselves, but the EKs, they, they rent from, um, from uh, as a service from fellow criminals. Um, and then uh, these EKs, if successfully, uh, Exploiting the browser will then drop their version of malware onto the endpoint, and we will show you the programs of this malware and also its features. Okay, first step, infecting legitimate websites. Purchase uh, panel have their own tool. They uh, primarily cPanel checker, which checks for the validity of username and passwords. And, um, and there's two versions to it. And then it will inject um, two, 
it will inject an iframer agent.php. Um, and this is the back, this is their back door. So they first run a large number of um, username and passwords, filter out all of the non-working ones, generate new text files with the working, currently working passwords, um, and then they will use the cPanel to upload their backdoor, what we call web shell, to, um, to these websites. And um, their web shell is iframeragent.php. And then this web shell doesn't have a user interface, it accepts commands. So they have another tool called Smart iFramer, uh, another Perl script that they use to talk to their um, web shells. And it will tell the web shells what to do. For example, what um, JavaScript to inject into what file. OK, the uh, cPanel checker uh, Perl script, very simply what it does is it, it accepts an in file, generates an output file. The in file is the file that they purchased. The output file is the same file, but with all the invalid entries deleted. Um, so this is, uh, this is their Perl script. You can see here the usage in, input file, output file, very simple. Um, let's see. OK. And the parameters are host, port, login, password. That's pretty much it. OK, so, um, so So this, um, this script just basically runs through large, a large number of um, cPanel um, hostname, uh, ID, and password, and generates a new file that the attacker can use. OK, it has, uh, uh, I, didn't, I didn't show you on the slides, it's concurrent. Um, currently, it's set up to run 40 threads at the same time. It also supports validating not through the um, cPanel um, HTTP request, but through SSH. It also has a feature to, uh, to, recurse, um, to recursively scan FTP directories. Okay, so um, it will, it, it's able to, um, through FTP, log in through FTP, not through cPanel, and get a list of directories. And we believe that that is for them to see whether this is a website that they want to infect. Um, they're very used, they're very familiar, for example, with WordPress. So they love to impress when they get a cPanel um, that has admin access to a WordPress website. So that's what they love. And the reason for that is they know exactly where, which files of WordPress to infect, um, to inject uh, with their JavaScript. And so, so they don't like to create new file, uh, create new JavaScript inside a server because um, it's easily recognizable by the admin. They love to inject their piece of JavaScript into one of, um, one of um, the legitimate JavaScripts that they are familiar with. And they're very familiar with the word process, uh, I'm sorry, WordPress file system. And we believe that's how they're using, that's why they have this FTP directories feature. OK, the iframer agent.php. OK, so now up to this step, after they, they ran this, they now have uh, a big list or lists of um, cPanel admins uh, and working passwords. The first thing that they do is, for the servers that they want to infect, they will uh, inject a backdoor. It's in PHP. And this backdoor will always exist as an independent file. Okay. Um, some actors will inject their backdoor uh, um, in legitimate PHP files, or sometimes even in stored procedures of databases. This group will not. When, when you're infected by this group, it's always an independent uh, PHP file. And uh, so... Okay, so this uh, it has very limit. This this backdoor has very limited features. It has one feature um, to create a WordPress admin, and the password is hard coded. 
and uh, they do not change it very often. So um, for these, these uh, websites that, um, that they, they, they inject their uh, backdoor, they would also usually create a WordPress admin called admin2 with a fixed password. Okay, and this part is um, it's pretty interesting. They have, to, they have to have a way to, to know whether they have already infected a website or not. So they actually, upon injection, when they inject a piece of JavaScript into an existing JavaScript file on that website, they want to later be able to know that they have infected this website already so that they don't inject multiple um, JavaScripts into the same website. So they would actually um, try to signature their own injection. But this signature cannot appear to be, uh, to be obvious by a security scanner or a security researcher. So what they do is when they inject their JavaScript, before and after, there is a fixed length comment that's randomly generated two randomly generated comments right before and right after the injection. Um, and it looks random, so, and it's random every time, so um, they feel that for a security company, you cannot signature these comments because every single injection is a random stream before and after. But how they're able to try to know um, whether this file has been injected, has been infected by themselves, is they just look at the length of the comment. Okay, so if they see a piece of JavaScript, and there's a fixed length comment before and after, they'll, they'll say, okay, we have, infect, we have injected this file before and we will not do it again. Um, so as you can see, this back door, it has a file path. So this is the, uh, this is the, um, um, the injection feature. So which file to inject, that's a file path. Mark begin and mark end is, are the two signatures, the eggs that I was talking about before and after their, um, their injection, their, the, the stream that they want to inject. Data is where to inject, okay? So, um, so, so they'll tell the, web, the back door, uh, we want to inject into this JavaScript, let's say jQuery, okay? We want to inject into jQuery.js, and we want to inject right before or right after this particular string. That's where we want to inject our malicious um, JavaScript. Um, so data is the, um, the pattern to look for. And inject position can be right before the existence of this string or right after, okay? So, so it's, it has two possible parameters, before or after. Inject code is the code to inject, okay? That's pretty much it. Uh, for this piece of backdoor that they wrote themselves called the iframeagent.php. Okay, so now uh, all of their infected websites will have this backdoor and then they run a script to automatically talk to these websites to do the injection. Um, and this piece of script is called smartiframer.pl. It, it sends HTTP requests to these backdoors and tell these backdoors what to do. Usually, they would inject a piece of JavaScript, let's say inside jQuery, um, and this piece of JavaScript will generate a redirection code to their TDS, which would then, um, if the TDS is happy, then redirect the visitor to an exploit kit. Okay, so we can see that um, firstly, this uh, iframer script reads a configuration file. So we can see from their configuration file, um, first is the URL of the backdoor, okay? Um, within the website, which, uh, you know, w w what is the file directory? And then it includes a password. So when these scripts, when, when this script talks to the back door, it does require a password. But the password is, again, um, always never changed. 
So, and then uh, there's a file, and this is the, uh, the file to inject uh, on the compromised servers, okay? As it, uh, the example here, it's a, it's a real config file from them. As you can see, they're putting it in jQuery. Data tail, uh, this is, um, they specify a pattern, and uh, they want to inject right after this pattern, okay? So they'll, they'll specify a portion of the jQuery.js, and they'll say, well, inject our script right after this. Um, and inject, uh, this is the uh, JS code is pointer to a function um, that does the injection. Okay, so the usage of this iframer, uh, it has two features, check or edit. Check is to see if this website has been infected before or not. Edit is tell the backdoor to do our injection. Um, so you can see that uh, it has a fixed user agent, which they hard-coded here. And here it's looking for uh, the pattern. It's doing pattern matching to see if that pattern exists. And if it does, um, it, will, it, will, it, will tell the, well, it will tell the backdoor to look for that pattern. And if found, it will tell the backdoor to inject. And um, so we ran this. Uh, we're not going to do the live demo, but we ran this. Um, and, as you, and we specify edit. So as you can see, we have um, down here. Okay, so we've, um, you can see at the bottom of the screen, um, those are the eggs, the red is the egg, and we've injected alert one successfully into one of their compromised servers. So we were running the script to talk to one of their compromised servers, and, and this is how we tested our theory. Okay, so when the visitors visit these uh, infected websites, they will get that piece of JavaScript. It is every injection is um, on the fly obfuscated. So let's say they have three, 300 compromised websites, um, the injection will all look different. Uh, and um, when visitors hit these websites, they will be re redirected to a TDS. TDS stands for Traffic Distribution Systems. Um, and um, prior to October 2013, they were using simple TDS. From 2013 to March 2014, they were using Kitaro. And from March um, until now, March the 4th until now, they're using Sutra TDS. Common TDS features, uh, features IP uh, filters, mostly IP ranges, for example. Uh, this actor is not happy with any IP range that's coming from a data center. They will refuse to redirect if the IP is coming from a data center. They just don't want to infect data center IPs. Um, language, they always specify the language, refer, as we've mentioned. Um, unique visitors, that is a, uh, a feature that they leverage, so they will not redirect the same IP twice, okay? They will, for each IP, they will only redirect once. And that's uh, mostly to avoid crawlers, uh, scanners, security uh, researchers. And um, so the script, their script that, that's injected into the junior website that will redirect to a TDS looks pretty much like this. Um, back in 2014, they were using the JSUB trial version of the uh, JavaScript, JavaScript obfuscator. And um, when deobfuscated, you can see that um, at that time, there's a, there's a signature that we used um, because it, it always had the parameter K in the end, uh, which, which um, hinted us that you know, if we saw this type of URL, we will be very suspicious. Now in 2016, they're still using the same JavaScript obfuscator, um, but the format's a little bit different. Now um, the keyword is view form. Okay, so once uh, the JavaScript runs, deobfuscates the URL, this is this how it looks like. Um, this is their actual control panel for their TDS. 
They, they've always been running their TDS themselves. Um, so we can see that uh, it's, it, has, it has a lot of uh, their configurations from the past. You can see that they were using Black Hole in the past, Phoenix, much older exploit kit. Um, now they're configuring uh, for IE. For IE, they're using Sweet Orange. Um, they're, uh, they're changing all the time. But um, still, they're only infecting Windows browsers. So we can see all of their config right on their uh, Sutra TDS control panel. OK, so if the TDS is happy, then based on the type of browser, the version that is visiting, they will redirect to different ex exploit kits. They do not run these exploit kits themselves. They, um, they pay for them. So, it's, uh, so we can see their um, different configuration. This one is for IE. So if your browser is IE, um, and, um, and you're a unique visitor because they have turned on this feature by real IP. So, if you're, I, so for every IP, they will only serve once. Um, and if your referer is not blank, if your referer uh, is amongst one of, one of their lists, and if your country is within these um, uh, you know, small set of IPs, that they, uh, uh, countries that they would want to infect, and your header is um, MSIE Trident, then they will redirect you to a, street or, a sweet orange exploit kit. <coughs> and this is for Firefox, also redirecting to sweet orange. And um, if you're not IE, if you're not Firefox, fine, they'll, um, they'll try to infect you with a JavaScript exploit kit. Uh, I'm sorry, Java exploit kit, okay, mostly Java exploits. And this is the rule that, that they're using. Um, this is the, their IP filter, so refer filter. Uh, it, so if the request doesn't have a refer that's on this list, they will not redirect. So this list basically tells us all of their infected websites. Um, okay, and, um, and back in 2014, this was our test. They would only serve, the HTTP response would be, would be blank. If we don't have refer, or if the refer is not right, if the refer is right, then we'd get the obfuscated JavaScript, redirecting to Sweet Orange. Today, right before this test, did it again, uh, same thing. If the refer is right, obfuscated JavaScript that points to rig EK. Uh, that's what they're using recently, rig. Okay. Um, so they reset their Sutra TDS from time to time. The Sutra TDS has a dashboard that shows us uh, the route hits, the unique visitors, and those that come without refer that they block. Um, so we can see when you took the screenshot for the, for the time that their Sutra TDS was up for that duration, because they, they, they do reboot it, take it offline sometimes. Uh, there were 47 million raw hits. 23 million unique visits, um, and about less than 1% had no refer. And this is the stats from their Sutra TDS. If their Sutra TDS decides to infect this visitor, what is the demographic of browsers? Um, so we can see that roughly Firefox and Internet Explorer is half-half. Um, so that's just a number to tell us, um, I think, uh, for this attacker group, um, you're equally liked or you're equally uh, vulnerable to their infection, uh, whether you're using Firefox or Internet Explorer. We, we did not see Chrome on here for some reason, although they had their um, Sutra TDS rules for Chrome. Okay, so um, when um, so now up until now, so we have seen their backdoor, we have seen their infected website, their backdoor, um, their malicious iframe, their TD, uh, their malicious JavaScript that redirects to TDSs and the exploit kits, right? And all of these, including the malware that gets dropped. Uh, they, on, they very frequently, at least once a day, they would run scan for you 
um, they, they, they bought this API and they would test this API, uh, they would use this API to see if one of their infected websites, if their um, TDS, if their exploit servers, or if the, the malware itself is being flagged by one of the security vendors. And if so, then they'll get notified through ICQ. And this is, um, um, so TDS URLs exploit malicious JavaScript. Oh, so if their piece of JavaScript is getting recognized, they would also be informed through ICQ. So, and that is why the antivirus detection rate on virus total, if you take any part of this, you throw it on virus total, it's always less than five because they act very quickly on a daily basis um, upon detection by any security vendor. So this is the, uh, um, the AV check. And from, their, from, from this file, we actually learned a lot about their system architecture. Um, we can see that uh, um, they have their uh, TDS hard-coded, their TDS domain, um, and uh, their exploit server IP. Um, and they, they have these server IPs hard-coded, uh, uh, server URLs hard-coded, or they specified um, lists of these servers. And, this, and these lists include the exploit servers, their TDS, and also their infected websites. So they'll, have su they'll, they'll use this script to check URL by URL to see if any security vendor is flagging any of their URLs. Um, and then their JS file, okay, that's the, um, that's, that's the piece of JavaScript that they inject, whether anybody's able to um, detect this URL as malicious, and also their current version of their obfuscated QBot that they're trying to spread. Uh, their scan for use ID is 143. Um, they hard code their token here. And, um, and their ICQ. And you can see here, this, uh, these are, are the list of security vendors that they like to match against. Not all of them, but more than a dozen. And um, here is Sutra TDS as a feature for, for um, there's an API in Sutra TDS for you to connect and get a list of re the referral list that we just showed. So this, um, this um, in, uh, AV Sutra check, this, this uh, piece of Perl script would actually connect to their TDS, get a list of referrers, and then pump every single URL into uh, scheme for you API. Okay, so this little little jobs, uh, this little Perl script, then make sure that they're not recognized daily by any of the security vendors. Okay, finally is their malware. If the exploit is successful, then the shell code would cause the infected endpoint to go and download their malware, which frequently is Qbot. Uh, it's been around since 2007. It used to be a worm. Now it's a RIN3 rootkit. Communication, uh, DGA domains plus RC4 encryption with SHA-1 random salt. Uh, what they do is, once they're on your system, on the endpoints, they exfiltrate, they steal POP3 and FTP passwords, send them uh, using RC4 encryption uh, to this actor's command and control. It has anti-VM and anti-sandboxing features. And the second stage it supports features for the attacker to send it commands to install other modules. And these modules include Session Spy, web injects Session Spy, hooks into the browser, and steals, uh, as we said previously, uh, online banking conversations and online banking credentials. And they're able to sniff HTTPS traffic because this module hooks into one of the browser's DLLs. Um, right after the browser's decrypted HTTPS. Web inject, um, pretty much the same thing, man in the browser. What they do is they recognize all of these 
um, online banking UIs, and when they see from the HTTPS response that the HTML and the JavaScript is something that they recognize, they'll say, okay, this is a um, login page to an, uh, to an online bank. And they'll, they'll, they'll modify this login page, usually to include a question for your second factor authentication code. Okay, so usually banks, um, US banks give you a token, uh, an RSA token or a Vasco token, right? So, we, so there's at least two factor authentication, your password plus uh, the mm -hmm. dynamic generated code on the token. Um, so WebInject will modify this page before the browser renders it. It will add um, a, another field for you to enter your second, uh, your, um, second factor authentication code. And then, when, so when you type it in, they're informed through ICQ and they'll immediately log in um, on behalf of the victim. Zero access, Smokebot, VNC, ran right in the browser. Um, so this, uh, once they install VNC, they'll, they'll, see, they'll, they'll just uh, you know, um, see exactly what you're doing with your browser when you're doing one of your online banking transactions. Uh, finally, they'll install Socks Fabric, which is which we haven't seen reported elsewhere. Um, it's their own tunneling service that they run, uh, which which we will show you. Strategy change since 2015, uh, 2015 they have also been seen to spread uh, ransomware, other than the uh, mostly banking trojans. They now spread ransomware too. Um, this is their Qbot command and control panel. You can see uh, the green box is a list uh, and the number of additional modules that their Qbot has installed on the endpoints. Um, and this is the command sent to every single bot and includes, for example, update or um, uh, CC main is, is uh, connect back to command and control every how many seconds. Um, or install is a command to install one of, uh, any one of the ad additional modules in the green box. Okay. So this is the live QBOT command and control. Okay, so um, they're bot. They ask for, um, they connect back to the command and control, but um, if you see the raw traffic, you'll see that it's a different, different um, response every single time. And this is because they, uh, they encrypt it with RC4 with a random salt. But after, see, after studying their program, um, it's easy because the, uh, they put the salt as the first 16 bytes okay, in their protocol. So we're, it, it was easy for us to write a simple Perl script, take the first 16 byte as salt, and de decrypt their uh, command and control communications. Um, so after decryption, this is actually how it looks. Okay, session spy. Um, as you can see, this is their um, session spy command and control UI. From here, you can see all of the um, all of the online banking credentials that they have sniffed. Um, as we said. Because it's uh, hooked into the browser, it decrypts HTTPS traffic, and, and it recognizes HTTPS uh, formats of a lot of the uh, online banks. So once they see the keyword, they would sniff it, send it back to the command and control. And um, how did we find them, this group? Um, how did we put all the pieces together? One was, um, for example, so, so, so with these attackers, the more complicated they get, the more sophisticated, the more stuff they try to do to avoid um, detection, actually the same, at the same time, the more traces that we, we can get because of the sophistication and the stuff that they're doing. Um, and, and one thing they did, because they used to just have one TDS, they have this one TDS server, right, that all of the websites in the end, will we'll redirect to. So it was very obvious that this was them. 
And then they started to, um, to try to hide this TDS server. So in front of this, this TDS server, they would have uh, quite a few Nginx um, redirectors served, uh, ran as reverse proxy. Okay? So now all of their JavaScript now point to different domains and different URLs. And these are their Nginx uh, redirectors that would then all redirect to, the, uh, to a single server that's the TDS. Um, and um, so that was uh, pretty good on their side. So we lost their TDS for, um, for a bit of time. But then, because they turn on, on their Sutra TDS, they turn on this un unique visitor feature. And how Sutra implements this feature is it will set a cookie, and the cookie actually specifies the domain of the, of the Sutra TDS itself. So just we realized, well, okay, just by looking at the cookie, we would know where their um, server is. They have very bad, they, once we, we can know their server IP, they have very bad security on their server. A lot of the directories and the web logs are just plain open. Okay. So, um, so, so once we know where it is, it's easy to get all the data that we got. Uh, the other one is they have PHP info. And um, so, so, <laughs> yeah. OK, finally, they wrote this SOX fabric module. Um, and it's written in C. What it does is um, once they, they have this uh, whole bunch of endpoints that are infected. And one thing that they do with these endpoints is they, they, uh, they run a tunneling service. So for example, um, if, I, if, I, if I own an endpoint and I sniffed the HTTPS credentials, the online banking credentials, right? Then I can um, usually using the same credentials then log in on behalf of the victim. But now a lot of the banks check for the IP range. So if I don't come from the same IP range, then uh, the bank system is going to alert and maybe just block me off. So all of these uh, actors, what they need is a tunneling service. So um, if I'm based in Russia and I got these um, real-time banking credentials from uh, victims in the U.S., then I want to act on their behalf. I want to route through a similar IP range, a Verizon IP or AT&T IP, things like that. So they're offering this type of tunnel tunneling service based on the endpoints that are infected. The SDK is, uh, is in C. It's very easy to use. Um, so if you're running, if you're um, writing malware, you can very easily incorporate their SDK and leverage their tunnel to tunnel through any one of their endpoints. Or, uh, for example, if, if um, we, the other one is for APT, if we want to get into NASA, it's, it may be very hard, right? But their um, SOX Fabric user interface has uh, a feature for you to query IP ranges, right? So if I want to Let's say there are, there's a dozen U.S. organizations that I want to get into. It's very hard for me to get into these organizations myself, but if I query on their SOX Fabric user interface and I see that one of the IP ranges that I want to attack is, uh, is within their uh, infectious endpoints, which means they have an endpoint in NASA, then I would definitely pay for that endpoint and just tunnel through that endpoint. So, um, so this is uh, this is the um, once you pay. This is the um, oh no, th sorry. This is the uh, the backend command and control. Okay, but you have a similar you see a similar interface when you pay for them, and you can see all of their endpoints. You can also query uh, country, city, state, and every bot has a unique bot ID, bot uptime, uh, connection uptime. And, and, and you have a search interface right here that, um, that you can search for, for which specific endpoint do you want to tunnel through. So they have a simple API. Um, so if, if uh, I'm a malware writer, I want to tunnel, I want to leverage their uh, tunnels. This is the C code. 
um, and it's it's just one line of code. Start NAT tunnel client, um, and then two parameters. That's their main server, their tunnel server's IP and port. That's it. Okay, and um, and and if I write my program, I'd be able to tunnel through. Um, so very simple C SDK for fellow malware developers to use. Who were the victims? Throughout the past 18 months, um, we have tracked over half a million unique infections. Uh, and these half a million unique infections um, owned a total of about 2 million unique IP addresses. Um, and uh, we did the stats through their QBot interface. So this is not all of the endpoints that they own, but the endpoints that they have installed QBot on. This is the QBot command and control. Um, so we can see you know, all of the data there, um, the bot IPs, the number of bots. They have uh, sniffed over almost a million, 0 0.8 million e-banking related HTTPS conversations. They're very, um, they're very picky about the conversations that they sniff. They, they do not sift, uh, they do not capture most of the conversations. Only if that conversation is recognized as an important conversation, it, it includes keywords that they want. Okay, um, and, and, and from the command and control, we can directly see all of the sniff conversations. Um, they have this mail checker suite. So as we said, um, they, uh, they also sniff uh, POP3 um, username and passwords. And once they sniff your POP3 username and password, they have this script called checkmail.pl. So they would be logging into your email account all the time, and what they do is they would delete emails. Okay, any emails coming from your on, one of the online banks or banks, they would delete. Okay, and this is uh, this is because once they log in on the user's behalf, sometimes the IP range is not exactly right, the time is not exactly right, or something. The banks will still allow this login, but would send the victim an alert email saying you have just logged in from which IP, and they'll just delete these emails. That's why they need the POP3 passwords. And, um, and this is the, the script that they use um, to log in to POP3 and try to find these emails from specific banks, they have a big list of, uh, of banks' domains, and they'll just delete these emails. Uh, victim distribution, uh, as you can see, oh, there's only a quarter non-U.S. Uh, victims. 75% okay, are all U.S. Uh, online banking victims. Uh, OS distribution, this group only infects Windows. They have no interest whatsoever with Mac and, and Linux. Uh, and Windows 7 and Windows XP about half-half. The online banking transactions, the 0 0.8 million online banking transactions that they have stolen so far, um, you can see um, the, the bigger U.S. Bank, the, the, like the, there are six U.S. banks that, uh, that account for more than half of the stolen transactions. Uh, Wells Fargo, PNC, J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, and Fidelity. Uh, they have their AW stats always on. So from, from that, we also gather, you know, um, what, what's the frequent access. A lot of times, you download their QBot malware. Okay, conclusion. This actor is still currently alive. We, uh, we named them Norton Goat because uh, when we first spotted them, their main server's domain was uh, Russian for Norton Goat. So, um, so that's how we named them. Their kill chain has always been the same. Inject malicious JavaScript into compromised websites that redirect to TDS, that redirect to exploit kit, finally download the e-banking malware or bank malware. Um, they have developed and uh, used quite a lot of in-house tools that we have showed you. 
Um, and their QBOT is to use to establish uh, entry, an entry point into the endpoint. They would then install a lot of modules through QBOT. Uh, finally, um, based on the number of transactions they, uh, they have stolen and uh, watching their activities, we think that this group is very profitable. Um, and um, uh, we have colleagues at Proofpoint that works with um, investigators uh, mostly in the US. Uh, right now we have um, no means of taking Russian groups down, uh, unfortunately. So um, throughout the past 18 months that uh, we have tracked them and um, recently talked about them in conferences, they're still very active. All right, that's uh, our talk. Thank you very much. Um, So yeah, thanks again from our side as well. Are there any questions? Yeah, maybe I can shout a bit. Yeah. Okay. okay. So do you have any indication if the malware of this network or QBOT mm -hmm. if it was bought in the marketplace or if it was developed by them? So? Um, we 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 didn't. Oh. Okay. So we did see QBOT code. Uh, we, they're definitely not the original developers to QBOT, but they have the ability to modify QBOT. Yep. Okay, I have one more. <laughs> yeah. And uh, did you also monitor their activity in the marketplace and in which marketplaces they are active? Yeah. Um, we, we, tried to, we tried to do that. Uh, we were not very successful. So um, we mostly have their tools and logs. Um, the, other, the other thing with uh, our team is um, um, in, uh, my team in Taiwan, we don't have anybody that speaks Russian. So, so it's hard for us to understand these forms. So when it, when it gets to that, that's something that we would like to do, but we haven't done very well. Yeah. Other questions? I guess it's better because of the stream. Do, do you have feeling that they notice that you are monitoring them and playing with them? And the second, did you get any threats already? Um, or? Yeah, um, we, um, we published a white paper and they immediately DDoSed us, yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I mean, um, they, they definitely don't know that we're tracking them and they, they try to hide. We have less of their command. We're making their security a lot better. Uh, <laughs> and they now have passwords to a lot of things, yeah. Okay, I think then, yeah. Uh, quick question. A lot of IP addresses everywhere. How much has those systems, the kill chain completely, is IPv6 compatible somehow? Uh, say again, sorry. I mean, all those scripts, yeah. are they IPv4 only? Oh. Or do they work as well with the IPv6? Yeah, IPv4 only. So move to V6, you are safe. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Okay, then. Um, thanks, everybody. All right, all right, thank you. Thanks for coming.